The Florida Panthers have now lost their fourth straight game in regulation. And with special teams still a struggle, it seems that the season has officially slipped away. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, March 28th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and send in your screenshot of your subscription to me at LO underscore FLA Panthers or email it at locked on FLA Panthers at gmail.com for your chance to win two free tickets to the Florida Panthers versus Toronto Maple Leafs game on April 10th. Best of luck, everybody. So the Florida Panthers, we spoke about it and hammered it on Monday's edition of the show about how this was a known room for error type of road trip and yesterday saying that even before going into Monday night's game against Ottawa saying me saying that it feels like it's over but with the Florida Panthers losing to the Ottawa Senators by a final score of five to two it, it's definitely confirmed that even more and on today's edition of the show, we do have a special guest here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. He is actually a pers- a multi-time guest on the show and someone who was there in person at the Canadian Tire Center and from his hotel room in Ontario, still in his uh, button-up shirt and, and tie, Alex Baumgartner from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Alex, how's it? Um. Well, I don't really know what to say. It's like uh, it, it wasn't a good game. Um, Ottawa scored three power play goals. They only had one even strength goal. Three of their four um, non-empty netters came from one-timers. The only Panther to score goals were uh, defenseman Gustav Forsling. It just really wasn't a – like, you know, maybe the Philly game, it looked like they caught a couple bad breaks, which it did. but. Um, you know, Toronto outclassed them, Ottawa outclassed them tonight too. Um, you know, you start down 2-0 in the first period. You're playing catch up two times in the game. Um, Ottawa had two two goal leads within that game. And if it wasn't for Forsling slap shot goals from the point, it would have been a runaway game. Um, Florida had their chances to equalize, and then Lundell took the penalty with four minutes left. And, well, Ottawa's power play was – absolutely working the Panthers all night and um yeah you know you kind of saw this one coming you know from the first period yeah and and it when when just talking about how the the Panthers going into tonight's game about how they they were on the plus side of five on five play and then the Ottawa Senators being on the negative side of of five on five uh play uh, for for their season minus 28 coming into tonight's game at five on five for the Ottawa Senators and the Florida Panthers even outscored them at five on five two two versus one but it, it just really came down to not staying out of the box a, a, as well for the this uh Panthers team and you know we saw it early with uh Mark Stahl taking the puck over the glass penalty and also the even though the Florida Panthers did have 34 shots on goal um, I, I didn't really feel like they they there were there were quality shots as as well, far as Ottawa was just cl- um, not and en- allowing anything down the middle. I think after I think after the first period, slot shots were like uh, a, a big advantage in Ottawa's uh, favor uh, there. And really, when 
and Randy Moeller described it on the broadcast really well about the gaps between forwards and blue liners of how it's creating easier uh, zone entries for the Senators versus versus the Panthers. And Randy Moeller was actually on ice level tonight for the for the Valley. Yeah, he almost got hit with a. He almost got hit with a. He was gonna puck or Nick Cousins flying to the bench. Yeah. So, two. but. It, it, it's just it's just crazy how the the structure of what Ottawa was doing, even at five on five, even though they uh, even though they're outscored and the lack of pressure on Matt Sogard and Matt Sogard is twenty four years old too, like a young guy, and the Panthers weren't able to get to get to him as often as they were. And think about the two goals from the point, nothing up in front, not, um, n- rebound opportunities weren't there for this Panthers team neither. So it's more than just the special teams play. Look. Uh, for for the Panthers, they weren't doing anything to create extra opportunities for them. Look, Armando, it's been the story of the season for the Panthers. The whole Absolutely. year, they can't stay out of the box. I haven't checked the um, the media site in a couple of days. The last time I checked it was a couple of weeks ago. While they were doing in their win streak, they were still one or two interchanging with Montreal for the most penalized team in the league, averaging around twelve penalty minutes a game. Um, tonight they got eight. You saw it. Ottawa scored three of their four power play opportunities um if you don't stay out of the box it kills you you know they had as you said they won the even strength battle in terms of goals the panthers are one of the highest um shooting teams in the league as well so you know putting up 34 shots even when i think they only had like seven in the first period or something like that it was something very minimal. I mean, almost 30 minutes through the game, they just hit 11 shots. I think it was mm. like 27 minutes in the game, and I think that was Forsling's goal, 11 or 12 hole. So it, it's been the story of the season, not being able to stay out of the box, getting the most shots in the NHL or around the most shots um, in the NHL on goal, but you're just – but besides that seven-game point game point streak, they really weren't putting too many goals – past opponents frequently enough to justify how many shots and opportunities they were getting. And I remember at the beginning of the season, the expected goals was through the roof. It's just the team hasn't been able to consistently put out enough effort or um, results based off of the expected goals and the shots. And then when you have an, uh, something like the with so many penalties, no matter how good your penalty kill can be, because, you know, sometimes they're red hot. But it's like when you have a team like Ottawa who can just walk it from the point with a Debrinkat or a Giroux, and then you feed a one-timer. I mean, Kachuk has 34 goals, I think, and Sturzla has 36. And then you have Debrinkat as well. I mean, they have scores everywhere. And those three guys all scored one-timers tonight. So, Yeah, yeah and you think about how uh, how the crisp passing for the Ottawa Senators on, on the power play as well has just – put the Panthers at one end of the ice as well, even on their even strength goal for the, for the, for the, well, you could, you could tell battle. the start of the game after, after the Brady Kachuk goal, um, you know, the, the Ottawa did get a couple breaks in the first period through the middle of the ice. Bob's kind of kept Florida in it when it was two zero, but if it wasn't for the power play, Ottawa, it, it wouldn't have looked as dominating of a win. And now that's not with me saying, you know, ignore the goals. The puck possession and the way that Ottawa was working the puck on those power plays was far more effective than what Florida did on their four chances. Now, while Florida might have had, you know, three or four good chances on their four power plays, Ottawa had three goals on their mm-hmm. four power plays. It was yep. just, you could tell watching the game you put it was almost like it was almost like watching tampa in the in the pet playoffs because when they got the power play you could kind of tell they were going to generate something and you knew every time they were looking for that cross ice pass hitting the open guy down the seam and well it worked they got two of their power play goals just like that yeah and that's and not only four power play opportunities but nine shots uh, 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 on on those four opportunities, and to put more salt into the wound, uh, two shorthanded shots on goal for the Ottawa Senators, while the Florida Panthers were on on the power play as well. So they didn't do themselves any uh, favors, that's for sure. 
But we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we're going to talk more about the missed opportunities for the Panthers because there was quite a few of them uh, on 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 Monday night, and it's crazy how much a, a difference one week makes. Definitely for for this Florida Panthers team, as now they are losers of four straight. We're going to talk about that next year on the show. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel Sportsbook, and FanDuel is the sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And tournament season is heating up. There are no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you could wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the nets. All on an app that's safe and secure and easy to use. Don't miss your chance on a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. Segment number two here on this Tuesday, March 28th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. I got Alex Baumgartner from the Five Reasons Sports Network here after witnessing in person the Florida Panthers losing to the Ottawa Senators by a final score of 5-2 to two in Canada's capital at the Canadian Tire Center. So, Alex, lo- lots of missed opportunities as well for, for the Panthers coming into uh, in this game, but also Sergey Bobrovsky keep, keeping the Panthers in this at time. Got a double save on Dabrinka and then a glove save on Pinto like in in the in the same sequence but also it, it the second period missed opportunities after missed opportunities on the power play i barkoff had a beautiful shot from the top um the from the high slot and it misses the net uh anthony duclair has a strip on thomas shabbat from the in the ottawa zone and then takes it all by himself and do you think that was shabbat. a penalty i couldn't really see from where i was no uh shabbat closed in well and disrupted the shot really well so it wasn't it, i didn't it think looked, it, was it looked penalty. scary because they both went foot first into the board and especially duke coming off an achilles i was very happy to see him and shabbat both get up pretty quickly mm-hmm. after that yeah so so thank thankfully thankfully he was able to get up uh very quick but Listen, um, Duclair's uh, finishing ability, it, it kind of goes back to the first season that Anthony Duclair was in a Florida Panthers uniform. Of course, we were going back to a, six, a 56 game season where it took him a while for him to score. So it, it, it's kind of where he's at the beginning of his season in, in the stretch. So I'm not having too many, too many high sure. expectations as far Duke as that. Duke is but. generating so many chances. And unfortunately, sometimes when you come back from an injury like this, it's almost like it's it, it kind of gets in your head at some point. It's like I just had a, like he had a pretty good lead here last season. He gets hurt in, in training or before training camp even starts in his off season workouts. He finally gets back. I think he has maybe maybe ten games under eleven games under his belt, something like that. His one goal came from an empty netter, and he's he still has his foot speed, so it's. It's like it looks like he's he's in perfect shape and it, like his speed's still there and he's still opening up the ice. It's just sometimes the puck won't go in and we saw it with Sam Reinhardt when the season started as well and Sam Reinhardt's still having a really good season. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes it's like you need to get that one, and unfortunately, it's it's just not happening right now. Um, but it, that can be said for a lot of guys on the team. And Anton Lundell hasn't looked great. This is a sophomore slump for sure. I mean, he had a couple, you know, spurts this season where they kind of shift him around. And it looks like his offensive game came back. But he also had a missed opportunity. And um, uh, I looked right at the bench, and it looked like Paul Maurice couldn't believe that got saved. Um, it was a tight angle. Um, he would have had to kind of pull it back, and in the heat of the moment, you kind of just shoot the puck. So I kind of understand, but still, it's like you know, there's only been a couple guys that have really been consistent with the scoring this season. And I think it's Carter Hagee and Matthew Kachuk, right? Sam Bennett, when he is in the lineup, he is generating a lot, but unfortunately, it couldn't have come at a worse time to not have Sam. They they haven't won like the last four games. Sam Bennett hasn't played. They haven't gotten a point. Not a coincidence. It's no. I mean. 
You know, he's playing that he's a, he's a number two center in the NHL. And when you don't have a guy like that in the two hole and you have to kind of, you know, put guys in different positions and then Lundell comes in, um, you know, Lister Ryan is flying around everywhere in the top nine just so they can kind of like solidify something. It's like, I mean, you, it, it doesn't all come down like it's a team game, but it's def like this undisclosed injury is definitely, you know, it's it's been hurting the Panthers because of how good of a player Sam Bennett is not just scoring, but kind of opening up the ice and just his impact with, with Kachuk. It's just, it's, um, you know, it couldn't have come at a worse time for the Panthers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that line was uh, buzzing with him and Bennett Kachuk and Verhage. but let's stay on Anton Lindell. You spoke about the, the missed opportunity that he had in the second period where Shabbat gives gifts, the Florida Panthers, uh, an, a, a turnover in the trapezoid. And then, uh, I, I believe it was Verhey who got it back to Anton Lundell, and he just ran out of real estate there. Um, if he had to do it again, he'd probably try it backhand and lift it a little, a little uh, bit. Like his momentum was going forward. The puck was kind. Of, he's a he's a lefty, so he's kind of going across his body in the first place. And players would do it all the time when your momentum going this way. You're kind of trying to bank it off of something. Of course. The goalie sprawled out, so the only thing he can bank it off is the front of his leg pad. I'm not going to harp on that one missed opportunity because it's not like he was staring at an open net. Mm -hmm. It's like when you look at the replay again, it's it was a little bit more difficult than it seemed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's definitely been um, pretty noticeable how good he was last year. And then this year, it's just it hasn't been consistent enough. And now he's been on the, he's been down the middle. He's been on the wing, back down the middle, back on the wing. He's a young player. It's just, it's not, this season hasn't been great after what we saw he did last year. Yeah. And his goal production is uh, down by at least half. And let's not forget that he spent a lot of time last year hurt too. And he was still producing at a, at a good rate uh, last year as well. But also the most important thing I want to get to when it comes to Lundell is the penalty towards the end on the faceoff where he gloves it. Just uh, it, it for, for that one, it's just your momentum's going down and sometimes you're trying to stop yourself that you accidentally uh, take your take your hand and, and, and swipe it. Uh, like it's like down. an instinct. Like it's an instinct thing. You see it yeah. all the time. It's just it doesn't happen a lot off the draw. And I'll tell you right now, when you're going down like that, the last thing you th you're thinking of is whatever rule it is yes, that correct. you can't. It's the same thing with like a, like the double, like the face, another face off infraction where the first guy kicks gets kicked out. If the second guy gets kicked out, the first guy goes, it's one of the two guys goes in the box. That's another rule. And people, it doesn't get called a lot because it doesn't happen a lot. But the last thing you're thinking of when you're taking the draw is the number two guy is, well, I can't jump too early because I'm going to get the penalty. But, like, yeah, it's, it's as clear as day when a, when a penalty it, – it's not like a, like a, you know, like a trip or like a like a questionable interference call. It's like it's, – it's, it's as clear as a delay of game when the puck goes over the, the board. When, when you cover your – when you put your hand and you try and, you know, move it back like that, it's a penalty and, uh, you know. Yeah, and, and like you said, instincts uh, take over and you're just trying to brace yourself at, at that point when, when he's falling uh, forward there. It's just, it's, it's just the timing was just, uh, was just, uh, was just uh, off for the Panthers and it couldn't come at a worse time. Uh, it's with it's worse penalty. because the, pen, the power play already, the penalty killer already gave up two goals and it probably should have, yes. the Ottawa probably should have scored on the first one as well. Yeah, and and that's where Alex, um, not not Alex to bring it. That was uh, where Timmy Stutzla, who, funny enough, same draft as uh, Anton Lundell, likely the best player uh, in that draft by a by a by a country mile as far as that. And then he uh, basically iced the game for for the Panthers, um, for the Senators, excuse me, and 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 then they score on an empty net, and then it's a it's five two final. The Florida Panthers uh, dropped his first game of the of the road trip, and it's just. Uh, it's to the point where the the season is definitely uh, slipping away. That's for sure. But we're going to transition over to segment number three, where we're going to flip it over to Alex, where he was able to talk to the team in, in the locker room and kind of get a feel of what was going on and what the comments from the, the players were. We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. 
Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Tuesday, March 28th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, where the Florida Panthers have lost to the Ottawa Senators by a final score of 5-2 to two in this first game of their four-game road trip. And looks like that the season looks all but over, uh, at least in my opinion. But Alex, you were you went you went into the locker room at Canadian Tire Center today. The few quotes that I did hear from the 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 players, they spoke mostly about how they liked their game. Um, it's just basically talking about the penalty troubles, like we spoke about it in uh, in this one. Of course, once again, the Ottawa Senators going three for four. But how how are you how are you feeling? How how how's the vibe like when when you when you entered and based on everything that was said and 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 the confidence level of course for this team when when dropping this this first one when you know that there's little room for error before before even this road trip started i said 8 8 2 and 0 um excuse me 7 2 and 0 was the was the record that they needed in order to give themselves a chance and they already dropped one so what was the feeling like when you, when after the game well it's not like they just came off of like winning a game and then they lose the first game of a road trip. You um you're already you already lost three and you drop a fourth and not only is this the longest losing streak of the season for the Panthers, it's also at a time where there's less than ten games in the season. So now you have eight games left. You're six points behind the Islanders. I mean I doubt they knew the Islanders score because the uh the game was still going on while their game was over. And the Penguins haven't really dropped off after Tristan Jari went down. So you're on the outside looking in already. You were in a playoff spot for about two days. You lose four in a row. I mean, anyone could tell you're kind of slipping. Nothing's really working. Um, you went from playing the best hockey of the season about to playing by far the worst hockey of the season. And you have Toronto next. And Toronto just gave them, you know, they they kind of, Toronto gave them a taste of their medicine from last year, the way Florida would just go in and demolish teams in their building, and now they have to go in a Scotia Bank, which Florida does not play good in in Toronto. I, I can't remember the last time Florida's won a game in Toronto. So, um, you know, you're playing one of the best teams in the league with one of the most electric offenses. Every time Florida plays Toronto, they play such similar games. It's always like a high-scoring affair. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard for it, it's hard to stay happy after you you, you kind of get blown out like this when you're so close in the game. You lose to a team that's chasing you, and then the teams above you continue to win. I mean, I can't gauge really what the players are thinking. It's just you know, you could kind of tell it's like it's almost desperation mode because you have eight games left. You don't have an easy schedule and you're on the outside looking in and you're not hot right now. You're ice cold. So um, if anything I could gauge, it's like you got to get start. You got to beat Toronto. You got to beat Toronto. Yeah, the last time the Florida Panthers um, went into Toronto and won was February 3rd of 2020, right before and this was before COVID hit. So, yeah, like that. Yeah. It's... So that's how long ago it was since the last time the Florida Panthers went into Toronto and and, and won. So, and listen, uh, first first matchup we you were you were there in person where where the the Panthers that was the Laurent, famous Palmeries versus Laurent Bressois game. But of course that there was a there was beef between them even Florida years played before. good that game. Yeah, Florida they did. They, they did, did not play good in Sunrise a week ago, though. Yeah, no, no, 
yeah, where the second period was just uh, the Maple Leafs just taking that um, away and 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 running running with it, and it was about three minutes I'll, where I'll they got two thing. goals. That, that first Toronto loss was the most undefeated loss I've ever seen because everyone kind of knew they got shafted. Everyone, yeah. everyone in that arena knew that Florida got shafted in that game. So. And, and look what happens. The very next day, the Florida Panthers get eight power plays against the uh, Montreal Canadiens at, at Bell Center. So what 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 crazy how crazy is that? I, I don't think that's coincidence by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just at, at this point, I, I just I got to ask you, man, how does this team regroup after 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 now four in a row? You beat and, Toronto. And no. You got to be <laughs> you don't beat Toronto. It doesn't matter what you do to Montreal, the team that you've owned this season. Now, Montreal has been the most injured team in the NHL. They're fielding a team that if they had a full NHL roster, maybe half these guys would be playing in Laval, not because of their – it's just – it's a lot like – Montreal has been so injured, they're fielding so many guys that might not have gotten that chance. And Montreal has been competitive against certain teams that are in close to playoff spots this year, like a Buffalo, like a Pittsburgh – Florida's other number, but you know it's hard to clean sweep a team four times. But you got to beat Toronto. <laughs> you know you beat Toronto. You you have seven games left. You go into Montreal. You're riding hot. If if you go into Montreal in a five game losing streak, you know there's a chance you slip against Montreal. It's you have to beat Toronto. Yeah, and you also got to wonder with this these next two games as well. I, I think I think Bobrovsky has to start both. I I, I really I I really I really do think No, they're gonna ride they're gonna ride Bob the rest of the season. I like, don't it's like I was thinking maybe Lyon gets either Columbus or Montreal, but I was I was forecasting this before the Detroit game. And I was trying to like kind of pick where he might get the second start. I think you just go Bob the rest of the season. There's really you you just do it. And 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 the logic is, if they don't make the playoffs, he has a whole summer off to train and get that rest. But you're playing for more. You're trying to play to extend your season. So I don't think you have anything to lose emotionally. By unless there's an injury, resting. I don't think you see Alex Lyon the rest of the season. Unless they're eliminated by game eighty-two, th- then, then oh yeah. yeah, then then it's different. Then you then yeah, so, yeah. You, then then you would. But you have to. I think. You're you're gonna you're gonna have Bobrovsky start both both games uh, for the Panthers, but really, really, when when you give up five goals uh, in in each of the last four games, I believe the n- total number is twenty one. I'd have to double check that number twenty one in the last uh, four, but it's just you're not gonna win a lot of hockey games of uh, giving up five goals whether whether it's five on five or power play because in their in their three game losing streak prior to Tuesday's game, they only gave up that one power play goal, which is the five on three goal against the Maple Leafs. But then, yeah. like I said yesterday, if it's not one issue, then it's another. And tonight was right back to the thing that they're worse at this season, and that's be going to the box and penalty killing. I mean, it's uh, you have eight games left. Your next game is one of the toughest teams. There's two teams that's really at Florida's number this season. It's Toronto and the Rangers. The Islanders beat them every time, but I think Toronto and the Rangers have the most dominating games. I think those two teams have just kind of outclassed the Panthers. Um, I, I say Toronto because of the last game, but that's also kind of me predating a little bit. But real okay, I take that back. Toronto hasn't had their number the whole season. They had them the last game. New York's had them the whole season. Yes, but you have to beat Toronto, and your Scotia Bank's allowed. Scotia Bank, yeah, yeah, and with Halak starting twice, getting, <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't, yeah, but backup it, goalies do really good against the Panthers. Uh, it, it just they, happens. It, it always happens. Either backup goalies or veterans. It's always one or the other. Yeah, and 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 don't forget Philly. Philly's another team that's owned Florida this season. Well, Going Carter Hart just stood Carter on his head every single time they played against Florida. So, mm-hmm. so it's a it's a it's a definitely a, a 
a product of how, how great Carter Hart is. But the next – every game from here on out is the biggest game of your season, even though it's – it feels like it's there and it feels like the dagger has been – has, has Look, been you beat issued. Toronto and Pittsburgh loses one of their next games, maybe you still have a chance. But you maybe. have to beat Toronto. You can't. Re- there, you don't have the luxury of hoping another team loses at this point. It's no matter how many games they drop, because both teams are the Islanders and the Pens were dropping games about a week or two ago, and the Panthers just couldn't consistently pull out more results. So you don't have the luxury anymore of sitting back and just like, well, maybe these guys will drop. You have to win your games. Yep. Your, three, your three, four, whatever it is, games in hand, everything. It's like you're chasing, you're chasing hard right now. And at this point now with the Panthers, it, it's the, the, I think the message in the locker room just has to be like, focus on your game, focus on you, focus on you. Just the task ahead is the Toronto Maple Leafs. That, that's right there. And this is a good, uh, this is a good chance for, for me to plug you on what you're doing for for the florida panthers this week you are the official canadian florida panthers reporter uh, up there in canada going to all three games during this uh during this uh road trip it, at least in canada um you were there in ottawa and then you'll be there on wednesday and thursday night so it's a good opportunity to plug all your work for what you do for five reasons sports i want to thank you so much once again for joining me on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, as always, and you are you're traveling, you're uh, you're grinding, and I want to say that I'm I'm very grateful to know you, uh, my friend. So let everybody know where they can follow you and find your work. I love coming on the show, and uh, you know, taking an extra thirty five minutes to talk some hockey really doesn't really doesn't uh, ruin my day at all. Love seeing Armando smile on a Locked On podcast. So you can find me on a bombgardner ninety one on Twitter. And yeah, um, I'll see you in Toronto. Yep. Make sure to follow his work there as as he will be in the press box for the remaining two games of the Canadian portion of the road trip. So Alex, thank you so much and hope to see you next time on the show. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Stuart Odin, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen of the game of the day, game to game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. So I'm Armando Velez with Alex Baumgartner. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.